Today, we shall talk about the similarities between banks and NBFIs. Let us discuss what do they have in common. See, from a functional point of view, if we discuss, the operations of commercial banks are identical to NBFCs on some counts. There are various points if we see that the functioning of commercial banks is generally similar to what NBFCs do, right, from the functional viewpoint. See, like NBFCs, commercial banks acquire the primary securities of borrowers and loan deposits. So what they both do is they accept the primary securities of the loan deposits. If somebody wants to go and deposit money, they can accept it. And they in turn, they provide their own indirect securities and demand deposits to the lenders. Now, they accept it and then they provide also indirect securities and demand deposits to the lenders. So this function we see that NBFCs and banks they have in common. Secondly, commercial banks resemble NBFCs in that they both create secondary securities in their role as borrowers. When they borrow money, they create secondary securities. Also the banks, also the NBFCs. Now commercial banks create demand deposits when they borrow from the central bank. When commercial banks borrow from central bank, as we all know, they create demand deposits. And NBFCs, they create various forms of indirect debt when they borrow from commercial banks. When NBFCs borrow anything from commercial banks, they also create various forms of indirect debt. Both commercial banks and NBFCs act as intermediaries in bringing ultimate borrowers and ultimate lenders together. So this is the platform, commercial banks and NBFCs, they are the platforms who bring together the borrowers and lenders. And of course, they both facilitate the transfer of currency balances from non-financial lenders to non-financial borrowers for the purpose of earning profit. See, they also transfer currency from lenders to borrowers, right? Who, want, who have excess money to the people who want to borrow it. They also earn profit. And of course, non-financial lenders, like if I want to keep my money safe in the bank, maybe I'm not a financial lender. I just have, I'm just a household lady. So they will take money from me and they will give it to somebody who is also a non-financial borrower. So they act as a platform in which borrowers and lenders, they come together and the transfer of currency balances also take place from those who have more to the ones who need. And in this course, they earn profit themselves. See, both commercial banks and NBFCs, they provide liquid funds, right? The bank deposits and other assets of commercial banks and the assets provided by NBFCs are liquid assets. We consider them quite liquid, all the bank deposits and the other assets which commercial banks provide. But the degree of liquidity varies in accordance with the nature and activity of the concerned financial intermediaries. Now, what we see in similar is they provide liquid funds. Now, how much is the liquidity that may vary sometimes, but the bank deposits also created by the commercial banks and of course the assets created by NBFCs, they both are highly liquid. Next, both banks and NBFCs are important creators of loanable funds. Both of them have this feature in common. Commercial banks by net creation of money and NBFCs by mobilizing the existing money balance in exchange for their own newly issued financial liabilities. See, they create money. Commercial banks create money. This we all know how they borrow from central bank, how they lend it to one person. They maintain their ratio and they re-lend the money. They create money. Similarly, NBFCs also do, do, do a similar thing. They mobilize the existing money balance. And in exchange, they issue their own financial liabilities. Now, we talk about two, three slides in the following two, three slides. We'll talk about uh, NBFCs. They are such institutions as savings and loanable associations, mutual saving banks, life insurance companies, common trust funds, pension funds, and government lending agencies. So all these are covered under NBFIs. What they basically do is they pool funds from net savers 
and lend them to finance the expenses of business firms so those people they will take collect the money from let savers the funds will come to nbfcs and then they will transfer it to the business people this is actually what they do now to obtain funds from net savers these intermediaries issue and sell indirect securities as we mentioned earlier they take funds from net savers and then they issue what do they issue is they issue time deposits common fund stocks saving and loan shares and insurance policies this is what they do in issuing their own securities these intermediaries purchase primary securities to lend funds to ultimate borrowers now what is the meaning of this primary security they include government securities mortgages common and preferred stocks and other short term funds so they will be purchasing all this and then in turn they will be lending it to the other borrowers nbfs fis are the financial firms that buy one kind of financial assets and sell another kind of financial assets as i mentioned in the previous slides they buy one particular type of asset to sell another type particular type of asset and they themselves earn profit now see savings and loan associations and mutual saving banks mainly buy mortgages and they sell savings deposits finance companies they buy installment loans and further sell commercial papers and insurance companies buy bonds and sell insurance policies so this is what they do here we come to the end of the article i hope you understood it please like and subscribe to my channel feel free to comment in the comment section thanks for watching stay safe stay blessed